Good evening. How are you guys all doing tonight? Or in the morning, or in the afternoon, or whatever time it is, wherever you are. I'm tired, and I am almost ready to hit the bed. I've been getting so many comments, and I really want to respond to all of them at this point. And I find talking a whole lot easier than pecking away. And I like talking. I actually don't talk all that much. I have a pretty solitary life other than my partner. Um, I talk to maybe one of my aunts a few times a week and Blue Thunderbird woman every once in a while. So other than that, I'm pretty silent. My partner he loves to talk. <laughs> so he talks for the both of us. And I've never been a huge talker, but I do like to talk. So hey, we'll talk here. So I wrote down some of your comments and I thought I'd just talk about it. So. Sharon from Australia says, Hi Molly, Sharon here from a very hot Australia. Similar journey, the shadow work can be very triggering. Thank you for your truth. A beautiful, treasured gift this lonely, weary traveler needed at this time. Love and blessings to you. Well, Sharon, I'm not sure how I feel about a hot Australia. Um... <laughs> I have to be honest, I had electric shock therapy when I was 20 years old, so I don't have much memory retention from anything I learned in school, and I don't have any memory, don't have a whole lot of memory retention now for what I learned, so I don't know a whole lot about Australia, but um, the little bit that I do know, it's quite inhospitable. Inhospitable? I don't think I'm saying it right, but... I'm sure that there's all sorts of beauty there too because where I'm living here now, uh, the bugs are just, I've never seen anything like the bugs we have here in summer. I just moved here a year and a bit ago. But holy shit, man, the lakes and the trees and the rocks are just amazing. So I wonder if you have the same thing out there, like lots of bugs, lots of heat, but amazing scenery. I don't know. Let me know if you want to. Lonely, weary traveler. Well, yeah. I I feel that pretty hard, you know. I'm not lonely right now. You know, I met my partner a couple months ago, but before that, yeah, lonely and alone. I do still feel pretty alone. I don't really have much of a community around me and I'm just work so hard on myself by myself to make my life beautiful. So it gets pretty intense. I'm someone who's like in my mind all the time. I'm just thinking and thinking and thinking about being healthy and what I can do and, and you know, how can I work on myself? And yeah, I want to have more fun. So love and blessings to you too. Thank you so much for writing. And um, well, what I've learned in my health journey is don't use sunscreen and don't use sunglasses. So I don't know how you feel about that, but we need the sun in our eyeballs and sunscreen actually causes cancer. Uh, we need the sun on our whole body. So if you didn't know that tidbit, you know now. <laughs> okay, Michelle. I would love to join your community. I would love to talk further to you about this. Uh, I think email me. My email is blueeyedmolly at hotmail.com and let's connect. I am looking for people to, I don't really like to use the word practice on. I'm taking an energy healing course and I need to get my 12 sessions in before I can like actually start earning abundance from it. I'm not sure. Any whoozles, if maybe you're, maybe you'd be interested in um, being one of my, don't want to call you a client either. I, I need to figure this stuff out. Maybe you'd like to, uh... <laughs> I'm just being so awkward right now. I'm sorry. Email me. I am available to do energy sessions with uh, for free right now. And you know, let's just talk about what community looks like because I don't have anything 
I don't have anything right now, and you know, maybe let's just email back and forth for a little, back and forth for a little bit, and get to know each other. You know, anyone who loves to join my community, hey, you must be an awesome woman. Hey, Mr. Amar, I'm not gonna read your whole. I think they're called handles. I'm just I'm too lazy. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I would like to give you the rune Algus, and the next time you are out in nature, look around you and look for it. He also wrote, trust the process, you are protected and guided. I was going to get my rune book here and see what that said. Uh, hold on, I shall be right back. I'm fairly new to the ruins. I got my ruins set from a beautiful, beautiful friend. And they the ruins pack a heavy duty punch. Like wow. I just wow. Okay, Algus. And I'm using a really old book. So hopefully that the meanings are going to translate from what you meant for me to get from my book here. Okay. Oh, Algus. Crap, I'm going to have to go through every single one here. Or do they have a table of contents? Nope. All right. Let's see if I can find it. There's 25 to go through. Here we go. Okay. Protection. Oh yes, this is a good one. Algas. Control of the emotions is at issue here. In transit and transition, shifts in life course and accelerated self-change, it is important not to collapse yourself into your emotions, the highs as well as the lows. This time offers ample mental exercise and stimulation. New opportunities and challenges are typical of this rune, and with them will come trespasses and unwanted influences. Algus, and I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's okay. Algus serves as a mirror for the spiritual warrior, the one whose battle is always with the self. The protection of the warrior is like the curved horns of the elk or like the sedge grass, for both serve to keep open space around you. Remain, mo remain mindful that timely action and correct conduct are the only true protection. If you find yourself feeling pain, observe the pain, stay with it. Don't try to protect yourself from life or pull the veil down and escape by denying what is happening. You will progress, knowing that it is your protection. Yes, that is so, so beautiful. And I love the, the sedge, um, sedge grass or like the curved horns of the elk like I am learning about uh, my, my Vita Kocha which is my you know the eighth chakra I open up my Vita Kocha around me and it's like my my a ball of luminous light you know so I have protection and like just the blades of the grass or like the the curved horns of the elk just like, just like a little bit of a buffer zone, maybe, right? I think that's so beautiful. I really like that. Um, not collapse into your emotions. I am famous for doing that. You know, I am getting a whole lot better, actually. My emotion regulation is finally starting to come after, I don't know, like 26 years. It's been quite the path, but it's been an interesting journey because now I'm feeling like I, so instead of going like this, like just super high, super low, actually the highs were never really high, like kind of a little bit better, super low, a little bit better, super low. Now that I'm evening out, I feel kind of cold. It's, it's been interesting to observe that in myself that I'm equate more levelness with just feeling cold and aloof. I am facing my pain. I am sweeping out everything from underneath the rug. I'm looking into every recess of my brain. You know, 
I am not trying to escape what is going on anymore because I've been there, done that, and it doesn't work. The only way through is through, and the quicker I get through, the more fun I'll be able to have in life because I've not had much fun in life, and I am looking forward to the rest of my life. So thank you for that. Every morning when I walk from my cabin to my partner's place, I pass by the grasses. There's a bunch of different grasses, and I will... I'll remember that now and I'll I'll look at the grasses in a little bit of a different way. Namaste, Mr. Amarth. All right. Wander Boy says, I've been doing shadow work for years. Don't get caught up into it. Just take one step at a time and keep going. By the way, you got this. We'll send you abundance energy. Oh, thank you, Wander Boy. You know, in the grand scheme of things, I don't know how, I feel like I've been doing this for years and I feel like I'm really new at this. Part of it has to do with my Chinese birth chart. I got it read actually just over a year ago now and the what sh this woman had to say was just completely illuminating. She said that every chart has, there's like kind of two halves to a chart and I don't I don't think they're like split in half it's just like there's most lives have a dark period and a lighter period and I got my darker period out of the way first and I'm on to my lighter period <sighs> I lost my train of thought holy shit man sometimes I wonder if I'm getting Alzheimer's or dementia because this happens to me all the time, but I think it's just because I'm a sheep. <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> I actually don't have ADHD or anything like that, but um, my thinking process is a little bit interesting. Okay, any hoozles, let's try to get back on track here. I don't know what I was talking about, but I'll, I don't know why I was talking about it, but I'll keep explaining. So, I'm, I'm 44 now turning 45 in May and in Chinese astrology there are five different elements and the best life is to have a balance of all five of them right and this the woman who did my reading said that I was pretty much just had metal in my chart for the past 44 years and I'm a for my day master, I'm a yin wood rooster. Okay, so metal can decimate wood. It can just totally grate it to pieces. And yeah, so I never really understood why my life was so fucking difficult until I got this reading. And it's, it made so much sense to me because yes, I've had traumas. And yes, I understand that different people handle traumas differently and for because I've had people tell me like well you know what you've gone through isn't traumatic you know like people die like come on and I've had other people say yeah like I, I get it and it's just because we all have our own personal makeup we all have a different personality we all have a different uh, set of DNA we all have different families and life circumstances and it's like the ingredients for my life and my circumstances just created my own personal hell. And part of that was having a life of filled with metal and very little else, like very little uh, water, very little wood, very little fire. What's the fifth one? Oh, earth. I want to say earth. But... But it's my birth chart is shifting when I turned 46. And the two years before a really big shift in your chart, you begin your transformation period. So I've been in my transformation period for uh, like a good, what is it, seven months now? Though I have actually started to feel things shift pretty significantly for several years now, but I have had some really, really shitty, painful 
traumatic things happen to me just sort of some of them are just out of the blue some of them have been like just chronic and ongoing and I know that's still the metal in my chart it's like it's gonna just maybe have its grasp on me till its last dying death on my 46th birthday <laughs> I'm not sure but So I have been doing it for a long time and I haven't been doing it for a long time. Um, I don't think I'm getting too caught up in it. I am quite focused on it because I just want to clear as much out of my body and mind as possible because I know how good I feel. You know, I lived in such darkness for so many years that to be able to wake up in the morning and do a clearing process and like lighten my load is just so phenomenal to me. I love it. I love clearing my body. I love the feeling of feeling good. You know, I really have never experienced that in my life before. And it's like, yeah, just bring it on. And if that means facing my shadows, I am going to fucking face my shadows, man. <clears throat> you know, it's so worth it. And facing my shadows is getting easier. I'm no longer dragged down to the point of being dysfunctional. I'm no longer just terribly, terribly triggered. I'll go through moments of being incredibly triggered, but it usually doesn't even last for hours anymore. And just hearing myself say that, it's like, wow, isn't that amazing? You know, I don't know why this popped into my brain, but you know, I tend to say what pops into my brain. So I used to self-harm myself, right? I would, I disarm, I actually haven't thought about this in a long time, but I tried cutting, it didn't work for me. Um, so I'd scratch myself either with my nails or with needles and I poured acid on my arm and That was my way of not dealing with my shadows. That was a way of, I don't know what, just, I was trying to express such deep pain inside of me. I was trying to, I was pretty much nonverbal at that point. My, my pain and suffering was so intense. I wasn't able to verbalize it. And I, I know that doing this, hurting myself was my attempt to tell the world I hurt so, so badly. <sighs> yeah, so I went from that to this, you know, to sparkling eyes, to being pretty high vibrational, to smiling and giggling and laughing at myself and to just facing my stuff. And it feels so damn good. And yes, Wonder Boy, I do got this. I do got this, you know? I've got some pretty crazy drama going on in my life right now, and and there's also some drama down, down where I grew up, so I'm living seven and a half hours from where I grew up. There's some pretty intense drama happening there now, too, and I'm not going to be drawn in. You know, I got this. I am more and more firmly rooted every week I don't know a whole lot yet about timeline shifts and timeline jumping and shit like that but I I think that I'm probably jumping timelines pretty significantly right now because even looking back two weeks ago I don't really recognize myself who I am today right looking back like September almost took me down it it tried really hard and that's only, what is it, three months ago now? That's not, that's a very short time away and I'm already being in a completely different manner. I'm a completely different woman. I'm handling myself differently. I'm thinking differently. I'm speaking differently. I have a different outlook on life. I just, I just feel like the fast forward button in my life is finally being pushed, you know? I've been stuck in all the metal for the past 44 years, like four decades of it, and of just feeling like I have cement shoes on and not getting anywhere very fast.
very slow. What am I trying to say? Not getting anywhere. Whatever. Every step I took was exhausting, you know? Whether I'm actually talking physically or emotionally and mentally, it's just I have worked so damn hard. And now things are starting to accelerate and it's beautiful. Okay, I've been like talking for a long time here now. Uh, that's part of my shame I still have. <laughs> it's like, ooh, I don't want to waste people's time. But, you know, it's ridiculous because you don't need to watch. You are not going to watch to the end if you don't want to. So, you know, I can probably natter on as long as I want to and not feel any shame <laughs> or guilt about it. It's just my little quirky thing, I guess. All right. Um, thank you for your comments. You are so, so loved and I feel loved and I feel blessed and I just want to share the love and the blessing back with you. So, Mr. Armar, Wonder Boy, Sharon and Michelle, I'm sending you big hug and I'm sending you light and I'm sending you love. I'll talk to you guys again. Okay, until next time.